Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Uh, today we're going to put together a USB pranker. We're going to solder together from scratch. Uh, this USB pranker is a uh, the product of a, a successful Kickstarter campaign, and the user manual is linked below. Uh, if you're using this uh, assembly video, please uh, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate your support. Uh, and let's get right to it. We're going to start with the resistors, but I'll talk about all of the components here. We've got two 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors a 4.7 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, three 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a 390 ohm resistor, a 160 ohm resistor, a, an 8 pin dip socket, a programmed microcontroller, two stereo connectors, uh, a male USB connector, a 10 pin dip socket, and a 10 pin audio chip. So first of all, let's talk about the resistors. There are two resistor slots, one here and one here. The resistor slot on the left is labeled 390R for 390 ohms. Place your 390 ohm resistor in that slot. Um, resistors don't have a polarity, so don't worry about uh, about placing it in a certain way. Uh, just make sure that you have a good solder joints and that there are no shorts. Follow the same uh, instructions for the 160 ohm resistor placed in the slot right here. Once those are soldered into place, we'll do all of our capacitors and then we will do our sockets. The capacitors are also an easy step. Uh, the difference between the black capacitors and the orange capacitors are the orange capacitors are uh, ceramic and they are not polarized. They've got the same size leads. There's no positive, there's no negative. And they're both labeled 104, which means 0.1 micro. And they go in the C3 slot and the C2 slot right there. Solder them into place, make sure that there are no shorts. Now, uh, when you look at your capacitors, you'll see one that says 4.7U and three that say 1U. One, uh, one you segregate those right off the bat. And they go in the C4 slot, C1 slot, C5 slot, and, C and C6 slot. Now the, the 4.7U, uh, the 4.7 microfarad capacitor, goes in the C4 slot. Now you'll notice there is a long lead and a short lead on all of these capacitors. This is very important. You don't want to reverse polarity. Long lead is positive. Short lead is negative. So for the 4.7 microfarad capacitor that goes in C4, you want to make sure that your long lead goes in the left pin. There's a little plus sign above the left pin. Make sure your long lead goes in the left pin, or left hole rather, and your short lead goes in the right hole. For uh, your first one microfarad electrolytic capacitor, uh, on the left on C6, your long lead goes in the right hole. And you'll notice a little plus sign underneath that. For C1 and C5, the, the remaining two electrolytic, uh, one microfarad electrolytic capacitors, the long lead goes in the left of C1 and the left of C right, uh, sorry, and, and the left of, uh, of C5. Left of C1, left of C5, long lead. And you'll notice above both of those holes that there are plus signs. If you solder these in backwards, you're going to have a rough time. Uh, make absolutely positive, double check it, solder them into place, and then next we will do our sockets. Many apologies, I forgot about the two single male pin headers. Now, these two headers are used uh, in case you'd like to power this unit not via direct USB, and they go in the slots labeled G for ground and V for voltage, five volts to be exact. Now, what I like to do is I like to place the short pin down into the board, use my nail to hold it in place, turn the board around, and add some solder and do that to both of them. It doesn't have to be a perfect solder joint but once you have them both standing uh, straight up what you can do is you can turn it around and uh, those two pins will actually be held in place uh, by where we're at in the board right now by the capacitors and you can add more solder to the two pins to make it a nice looking solid solder joint. Now you can see this uh, in just a minute after I soldered into place you can see what uh, the uh, pins should look like when soldered into place. As you can see, not great solder joints, but now that I've got them into place, pardon my reach, this is the uh, video might get a little bit blurry when I do this, but the components in the board are holding into place, so after just dabbing a little bit of solder in it to keep it in place, I can re-solder the joints and now I've got, now I've got them soldered in properly. You'll notice on the footprint that both sockets uh, have a notch in the left hand side of the footprint. Both of the sockets themselves have a little notch on the left hand side of each. 
When you place your sockets into the PCB, make sure that the notches on the, on the sockets are facing left from this perspective. They should have fit, fit in nicely. And what, what I typically like to do is I like to place uh, each socket in, hold it down with one finger, turn it around, and solder one or two pins just with a little dab of solder from your soldering iron. And once that's done, it'll hold it into place, and you can solder the rest of the pins uh, along with uh, along by with resoldering the initial pin that just had a solder dab on it. And I'll give you a quick example of that right now. What I've done is I've just added a little dab of solder here and here, and now I'm going to go through solder each and every one of the pins, and then I'm going to uh, resolder the initial pins that were dabbed with solder to hold into place, just to make sure you don't have a cold solder joint. Uh, once you're done with this, we're going to solder in the USB connector. This is the most difficult portion of the assembly, and uh, this is the USB, the male USB connector. There are four pins on the back, and two pads on each, one pad on each side that act to hold the unit in place once soldered. The the pads on each side go into the big holes, and the four pins on the back go into the uh, middle four holes. Now what you're going to want to do is, this is this is difficult, you're going to want to make sure that if you bend any of the leads in the back of the USB connector when you're placing this in, that you're going to want to remove it and try to realign them very, very carefully. But you also want to be pretty gentle. Don't keep, uh, worry too much about lining up the big pad holes on the right and left. You want to make sure that you line up all of the four holes. And I can't really do that in front of the camera because I have to keep it close to my face just so I can really get a good view of this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the holes, I'm going to push it in, and I'm going to show you what it looks like at before it's soldered. It's in place, but not soldered. You'll notice that the front comes down right over top of the PCB. And to double check, what you want to do is before you solder it, look and make sure all of the four pins in the back are in fact in the holes. Now, through the back side of the PCB, you'll notice that the pads on the side come right through. And that, to, a very, to, a, to a lesser degree, the pins from the, the back of the USB go through the PCB. And they do go through the PCB, they just don't have a lot of extra lead. So what you want to do is you want to solder the sides first, making sure after the, the fact that it's still straight. And then what you're going to want to do is solder each of the four holes. And you can even add a little bit of solder, and as you solder, you might even notice that some of the solder is sucked down into the hole. That's a good thing. Once you're done, you can even take a magnifying glass and ensure right in here that the solder joints have gone all the way through. So solder that into place, and then we will do our second last step, which is soldering in the uh, audio stereo connectors. The stereo connectors have five leads, four in the back, one in the front. Make sure that they're nicely straightened. If uh, you, if, uh, you find that one or two of them, or one or both of them rather, have a bent pin, in this case, the uh, ground pin, the single pin on the right hand side, was bent back slightly. Just straighten it, very easy to do. And then place it, line it up, and place it into the connector. It, fits, it should fit in nicely. And you shouldn't even need to hold it in place it should hold itself in place. It couldn't hurt to add a little bit of uh, pressure from the front of the board while you're soldering one of the pins, but one will hold it into place. There's a very easy component to uh, put into place and solder. So solder all five holes on both of the different stereo connectors, and then what we're going to do is we're going to finish the video off with um, placing the microchips into the sockets. This last step will require some finesse. I suggest doing the, uh, or placing rather, the 8-pin microcontroller first, and then the audio chip. So I'm going to remove the audio chip from the equation for now. Now, people have different methods of doing this. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to inspect the chip. Are all the pins straight and uniform? If so, good. And you might have your own way of doing this, but what you need to know is there's a little notch, sorry, on the left-hand side of the programmed microchip. If you remember, we had soldered in the sockets with the notch facing the left of the board. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit in hopes that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and what I like to do is I like to take the bottom four pins and seat them first in the top at an angle and then bend just a little bit, placing a little bit of uh, pressure on the front pins uh, or rather top pins to bend them into the socket place. And you'll know, you'll know that if, if they're, they're seated properly because one side will bend down and it went right into place. So that's a little bit hard to explain. It comes from lots of experience. Hopefully you won't have a problem with it. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the, the uh, 20 pin socket, 20 pin microchip. And I'm going to place the bottom pins in first. 
take it back at an angle like this, make sure that all the pins are in the holes. Then I'm going to place a little bit of pressure. I'm not going to force it, but just a little bit of pressure on the top. This one was an easy one. And uh, you can even double check before you push into place. Are all of the holes, uh, uh, prop are all of the pins properly in place? And then what I'll do is I'll just gently, there we go, I'll massage it into place. Now if you bend some of the leads, remove the chips with a flathead screwdriver. Make sure that they're both, uh, that all pins are in from a bird's eye view. Make sure that you've put enough pressure that they're actually seated properly. If you need to remove it, you can take a flathead screwdriver and simply just gently massage the left hand side and the right, all the way through. Just gently, you don't want to do any damage and it should pop right out. So now, you're all done. You should be able to test it. And the video manual will be linked below. Thanks to everyone who pledged towards this Kickstarter campaign. I hope this video helped you. Again, if it did, I would certainly appreciate a like. Thanks a lot and take care and have a great day.